Hello, everyone. It is the second Thursday of the month, or third Thursday of the month, excuse me, which means that it is community call day. So thank you, everyone, for joining. We're just going to wait a few more minutes for people to roll in. It is the top of the hour, but sometimes people are late. So we're just going to hang out for a couple more minutes as people come on into the meeting. Once again, uh, if you can't make it for the whole call or you are supposed to be working or doing some other things, this will be recorded and uh, placed on the Realty YouTube um, for later viewing. Um, but we do appreciate that you are here because this is the chance for the Realty community to come into the same room, uh, ask us questions. Uh, some of us are monitoring the chat. So if you wanna ask questions, we can answer you there. Um, and I just think this is a very special time for the various different uh, stakeholders of so many different properties in Detroit from so many different countries all over the world all get to come and hang out. It's something that is very unique and specific to the cryptocurrency industry and, and how blockchains work that over 200, 300 uh, different individuals from 40 different countries can be owning the same property. Uh, and so we like having these community calls because this is a chance for us to engage with you guys and for you guys to engage with us. Uh, and so these, these, uh, this, the community call has like started off as an experiment and it's um, progressed more and more. And, and we were trying, starting to redefine really what it is. Uh, and it's uh, something that we're just doing constant live testing with the community present. And so thank you for being a part of the Realty community. We appreciate all of you. All right, so the schedule that we have today, uh, we're gonna talk about some updates to the website that are going to be rolled out uh, later today after this call. Uh, then like talking about um, uh, community feedback, we definitely wanna talk about Uniswap and the future of Uniswap. Um, the goal of Realty is to make uh, real estate liquid and we've done that via Uniswap. Um, uh, Uniswap, just came out with their version two, uh, and that has some changes. Now they're not materially materially different, so we're going to talk about what those what those changes are and try and get the community's feedback as to whether they like Uniswap v1 or v2. So we're going to start that conversation today. Uh, we're going to have some uh, incoming property updates, uh, and then there's also been some questions on the Discord um, about uh, the about legal structure. Now, none of us here on the call are lawyers, and so we cannot give strict legal opinions, but we are going to um, do our best to kind of answer our, those, those questions. Uh, one moment while I change some things around. All right, and then, and yeah, that, that will be it. So uh, starting with updates to the website, there are two things that, that the web dev and developer team has been working hard on. Uh, one of those things is Fortmatic, which um, if you have used other, um, other websites that are operating in the Ethereum and DeFi space, you may have used Fortmatic before. Uh, it's being rebranded to Magic, so it's now being called Magic, just FYI, if, if uh, you hear Magic, that's also what Fortmatic is. Um, for those that don't know, Magic is a system for kind of uh, obfuscating or, or hiding away an Ethereum address and public-private key management. You know, it's one of the biggest uh, barriers for adoption for this space is that private keys are intimidating for a lot of people, uh, and it's kind of where basically every single crypto company or even these crypto systems themselves like Bitcoin and Ethereum lose people. Uh, we lose adoption because private keys are hard. Uh, and so um, Fortmatic slash magic is a solution for that. And so what it does is it allows for people to have an Ethereum address that is linked to their email address. And then that private key is uh, encrypted in a cloud that is not accessible by anyone, including um, uh, the Fortmatic Magic team, and then also any of the uh, teams that are implementing it, right? So Realty is implementing it. It's also on the set protocol page. Uh, tons of teams are, are implementing this, but no one has access to the private key except for the person that has it associated with their email address. Uh, and so uh, for those that use this, it's 
it's imperative that security around your email address is secure because that email address is the thing that gives you access to um, a private key. And so what this does what, uh, for users that are coming to the website, uh, you guys all submitted an Ethereum address with your KYC. Uh, and that's already so for, for people that are specifically just interested in realty from the real estate side and less from the crypto side, that's already kind of scary. Like they, this might have been the first time that they heard of an Ethereum wallet or an Ethereum address. So now there's this new option. I'm going to share my screen. There's a new button that just allows you to uh, create your wallet. Uh, just create a wallet. I want to create a wallet. And that's a pretty intuitive thing. And so uh, this is what the new KYC process uh, flow looks like. Uh, and if you cl uh, click the second button, I want to use my own wallet, then that would just redirect you back to the page that you guys all filled out when you um, submitted your KYC application. This new, I want to create a wallet uh, button is this uh, new option that will uh, link will start to use Fortmatic or Magic in, in the back end. Uh, and so after clicking that button, uh, you get this little, um, little process exp explanation. We're, gonna, we're working on that copy, so it'll be a little bit different. Uh, you press the Create a Wallet button, and then an email is sent to your email address. Uh, I don't have the, the visual for the email on the email address, uh, but you just go to your email address and click on the link, and then that will send you back here, and it will have created your wallet in the background, and it's done. It's super simple, super uh, seamless. And then with the portfolio, this is as if you were logged in. Uh, and you needed to access your wallet, right? So you have tokens uh, in your um, Ethereum address that's now um, associated with your email address. And then you come to the portfolio and you would click this button to unlock it. It would then trigger an email sent to your email address. You would go into your email address, click the link, and that would unlock it. Uh, and, and then that would give you the options to um, send, send um, real tokens or rent. And so... The cool thing about this process, one th the, the thing that we're doing is you you're, you're receive your tokens and then also your rent in this wallet that is linked to your Ethereum address, and then you access it through the website. And so for people that um, don't care or want to know about Ethereum, it's very easy. And then uh, we're integrating with this company called Biddy that is offering these off ramps for uh, uh, crypto assets like USDC or DAI. And so with that integration, they're, they're, we're processing the, the company approval process right now. Once that is, is done, then uh, you'll be able, or people who have signed up with Realty through this process can just uh, have their DAI or their USDC or their rental income just uh, sent directly to their bank account. And so at this point, Ethereum or all blockchain stuff is totally obfuscated away. Uh, and so like Realty can become you know, it can become who, what it needs to be for that particular user, right? Does, does Realty, uh, is they, are they a crypto company or are they like a, a real estate company? I mean, obviously the answer is both, but depending on who you are as a user, are you a crypto person or are you a real estate person? It really caters to both of those. Um, and this is by no means forced upon any user. No one is required to do this. This is just an option for people moving forward to use the magic wallet inside of the website. So like if you still want to use your own normal Ethereum address, uh, then, then you, will be, uh, you will be enabled to do so. And that's what we hope uh, to do in the long term, right? Like we just hope that people start to use their own wallet um, because that is like the ethos of the cryptocurrency world. Like we want people to manage their own funds. Uh, in, in a way that, that they control a little bit more directly rather than through their email address. Um, so that's that. Uh, if there are any questions about that, put that into chat. So far, I see none, uh, which I hope means I explained it correctly uh, rather than everyone being confused. Um, with that, the second feature that's being rolled out today is the sell tokens feature, which uh, we demoed. Uh, I, I kind of gave some early preliminary screenshots the last community call. Uh, so if you missed that, you can watch that, that video on YouTube that's available there. Uh, um, right now, the sell tokens uh, button on the website just triggers an email to us, and then we manually process it. This is a little bit more um, intuitive and direct. 
Uh, and so the, the new sell tokens process uh, will have like fields to input um, some information and data, uh, mainly transaction hashes. And so you will be given instructions right off the bat from the sell tokens process. Uh, and so like if you submit a request to sell three Fullertons or whatever, uh, you uh, are given those instructions as to where to send the tokens and then um, and then also a place to submit that transaction hash of the confirmation of the sent tokens. And then what's really cool, um, Ben and, and Tori, our, our awesome web developers, have made it so that that stock is then immediately added back onto the website to, to be made available for, for others. Um, we, so yeah, so that's, that's pretty cool. Uh, I'm getting excited about that one because that takes a lot off my plate. So I'm always happy about that. Um, Ben, I think I covered any, everything, but if you have any further input, let me know. No, no, you've, you've covered the high points. Thanks, David. Cool. Thanks, Ben. Uh, okay. Um, and before we get into property updates, uh, I want, this is something I want uh, a couple of questions in the Q and a, uh, one, one moment. Um, is it possible to move tokens from a private wallet to the new online wallet? Yes, yes, it will be. Yeah, uh, that will require me to go into your user account and enable that feature. But if that is something that you're interested, in, that's trivially easy. So if you want to access the magic wallet, even though you already have your own wallet, you'll, we will be able to do that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, is the fiat offering globally available or is it only available in certain countries? Yeah, so it's pay, the traditional payment rails are always domain specific. Uh, we've chosen Biddy because of their strength in Europe uh, specifically. Uh, and so you, most, most European countries sh should be working right out the, out the bat. There are other countries as well. I don't have that off the top of my head. Um, but like for the majority of realty customers uh, should be able to access that fiat off ramp. Um, I think we still need to find partners in South America. Uh, I don't think it'll be working for countries like Argentina or um, Brazil. Uh, and so we'll, we'll, we need to find a domain specific fiat off ramp for those countries. But for European uh, customers, it should be ready right off the bat. Yeah. Um, I, and I will get a list of the specific countries um, that they support. Uh, so we, I have more, a more better concrete answer. Uh, thanks, Mark. Uh, okay, um, ne next question I want people's feedback on is uh, Uniswap. And this is kind of the place that we're going to kick off this conversation, but I'm also, we're also going to host it in Discord. I'm going to find the right way to generate a poll. But Uniswap has its V2 system very recently launched. Uh, and it's not materially different than Uniswap V1. The biggest change is that uh, you can go, it's, it's not dependent on Ether as the other asset, the other token that everything is being traded against. Uh, so in Uniswap V1, all markets are traded against Ether. So, and, and real tokens included, right? And, and that doesn't really map onto the traditional world. Like when you sell a property in the traditional world, you don't sell it for Ether, right? Like you sell it for dollars. Uh, and so that would just make sense uh, for Realty to uh, make that with, with a Uniswap V2, where you can go from any token to any token, it would make sense to have real tokens be traded against dollars because that's how the world works. Um, however, the question is, is that if we do migrate to Uniswap V2, how much liquidity from everyone's um, uh, su submitting liquidity into Uniswap V1, how much of that liquidity migrates to Uniswap V2? Uh, and that's my main concern. If we migrate over to Uniswap V2, sell our sell the, the realty sells the ether assets for dollar assets and then provides liquidity that way, does everyone else also want that? Um, because you know, the, for the remaining properties, the, the second half of all the properties that we've issued, the incentive program has put in a decent amount of uh, realty users funds for people who are interested in, in accessing the incentive program uh, and that is all ether denominated. Uh, and so it's really a question of like, of the Uniswap liquidity providers who are providing liquidity, they're providing it in ether. Are they also interested in, in providing liquidity with dollars? Because some people want that, uh, at that uh, exposure to ether and more than, more than dollars. And so if that means that there's more liquidity inside of Uniswap V1, then that is something that we need to take into account. And since we're already 
um, all of the liquidity is already in Uniswap V1. I'm worried about if we move it over to Uniswap V2, that we'll lose some of that liquidity. And again, like one of the core goals of Realty is to make, um, make real estate liquid. And so these are the things that we're kind of weighing the pros and cons of. And then also the, the timing of, of Balancer, which is always kind of on the horizon. We haven't really gotten that timing pinned down, but if that, if Balancer comes quickly, uh, then uh, I would, it wouldn't make sense to move to Uniswap V2 if, if Balancer comes shortly thereafter. So these are the things that we're weighing. Uh, I would love the community's input. If you are a liquidity provider and you have an opinion as to whether or not you would also provide liquidity inside of Uniswap V2, I wanna know. Um, so if you guys wanna type it in chat or in, or in Discord later, uh, I, I, that's, that's good information for me. Um, somebody just typed in chat that they would be happy to migrate to V2 with US USDC or DiPair. Yeah, but currently gas is priced is pretty expensive. Um, and yeah, I would totally be uh, agree that we wouldn't do this while gas is so incredibly high right now. Um, yesterday, gas was looking like it was coming down and then it just jumped to new highs. Um, like we're, we're using more than 50 GUE to send out tokens at, at, at the moment, which is pretty ridiculous. Um, a little comment on, on that, actually, as, as we wrap up the whole Ethereum side of things. Um, we've seen this before. There are sometimes periods of really high gas prices because there's this, it's usually a Ponzi scheme uh, that is done in somewhere in the world that you know everyone is, is really into and the mania is going on and it's just clogging up the Ethereum gas prices. These things tend to not be sustainable uh, because when, when gas prices are 50 plus Gway, that means that this one application or one system is, is basically burning hundreds of thousands of dollars um, every few days just to have the transactions in the blockchain. Uh, and so typically these things don't last for very long is what we've seen. This is like the, the third or fourth uh, time I've seen this in my time in Ethereum. But when they actually pop and, and go away, no one really knows. Um, and so we're, we're observing the, 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 the networks. We're, we're watching how much they're burning. They're burning a lot of money, um, but we don't really know how, how far they're, they're willing to go with that um, before, uh, before they return to normal. So that's why we've moved to once every three day uh, rental, uh, rental payments. Um, we, we always love the, the daily rental payments, but at the, at the end of the day, we had to be pragmatic and it just didn't make any sense. So the once every three day rental payments are, are a nice compromise that or they're still coming pretty frequently enough where they're not disrupting um, second secondary market activity, um, but you're still getting your rental uh, rental income at a, at a nice steady uh, tick rate. Uh, can rental income be sent to Coinbase account? Uh, so I want to be careful here because there's two Coinbases uh, that have, offer you wallets. There's the Coinbase exchange where that answer is definitely no, it cannot. And then there's Coinbase wallet, which is yes, it can. And those are two separate apps. Uh, and so do not send real tokens to Coinbase Exchange because they don't support real tokens, right? They're, they don't know. There's plenty of, of spam tokens that, that just get sent everywhere. And if it gets sent to a, a, a wallet like uh, a Coinbase wallet, then they can't recover that. And, and you don't want to send tokens to the Coinbase Exchange wallet because they don't uh, offer, offer access to that. Coinbase wallet, the, the browser wallet, you totally can use your real tokens into. Um, I hope that answers your question, Bon Swan. Thanks for that. Um, okay, if there are no other questions about Uniswap V2, uh, when Marthys is done, uh, then we will move on to talk about property updates, which I'm going to pull in John Mark on. Um, John Mark, you're muted. There we go. Yes. Hello. Hello, everybody. So. Uh, about the properties, we have a property coming up very soon in the coming day for our U.S. accredited investors. So it will be uh, a regular. It will be under the Regulation D um, of the Securities Act exemption, um, only for U.S. accredited investors. Uh, it's a nice property, solid financials, ex excellent cap rate, um, and it should be available by tomorrow at the latest. We have also decided to have a uh, property day once a week. So once a week, we will come up with a new property uh, 
that's what we're striving for. It's our objective uh, to be able to invest. And I think once a week uh, is a good um, objective and it's a good rhythm. Uh, we have two properties coming up potentially. So it'll be two weeks, one every week, another one in Detroit and another one, we're looking at two properties right now in Florida. Um, one of them is very promising. We'll see if, um, if it goes through. Uh, it's a Section 8 property and it looks uh, very good. The other one is not Section 8. It's excellent, but it doesn't have the security that Section 8 provides today. So we will be having our first property in Florida maybe next week or the week after that. Um, and these are the updates on properties. We will remain for the time being in single family homes. If we have a small multifamily, four to eight apartments max, uh, then uh, we will try to negotiate it and jump on it. For now, those that we have found were not interested. Cool. Any awesome. questions Thanks. about properties? If we uh, if we get any John Mark, I will I will read them out. Um, thank you thank for that. You. Just just to expand on that uh, new property day, I, re I really like it. Uh, Realty, we've been trying to balance um, the demand for properties that everyone wants, uh, and then also not not rushing with property selection. So like we have, there are plenty of properties out in the world that we can tokenize and put on the on the platform. But uh, Realty, I like to consider as like a very white glove service. Uh, and so we want to be very specific and intentional with the properties that we put. So there's a balance between like, do we just put 50 properties on the market or do we put the best, most cur curated properties on the market and go a lot slower? Uh, and so the, the new property day, uh, we have not yet picked out which day that's going to be, um, probably something earlier in the week rather than later. Um, that kind of like, uh, I think is the right balance between um, the, the selection that's available all around the world. And then also the fact that we want to curate only the best properties that are the most secure properties. And then that, that's where section eight has really come in handy, especially during coronavirus times where uh, tenants and rental income are as in the whole real estate industry is, is less secure than it, than it once was. Section eight has generally been um, protected from that. And that so uh, Remy John Mark hats off as the real estate side of, of, of real uh, of realty as for, for making that decision. That was, that was obviously the right one. Um, and so uh, I think the, the um, new property day that is one property a week uh, and that uh, having that consistency for, for uh, the realty community and realty investors, I think will is the right balance between finding and accessing the best properties and then also making sure that there's always um, always supply available for those that want it. Okay, um, moving on onto the last subject, which is the kind of an explanation of Reg D and Reg S. Uh, again, we no one here on this call is a lawyer. And so we, we have to be careful with what, with what we say because we cannot give legal advice, but there's always questions as to you know, what is Reg D and Reg S and, and how do these things work and, and how does Realty use them? And so we're going to, with the best of our ability and the best of our limitations, um, uh, do our best to explain uh, Reg D and Reg S and how that relates to the investors and, and how it relates to Realty at large. Um, so John, Mark and Gary, if I could hand it actually back to you guys. Well, right now, I would rather have Gary, who has much more experience in what Reg S and Reg D uh, take over for the time being, and then I can maybe talk about how we at Realty are doing it. We're just separating properties for one exemption or the other. Mm. Gary? Hi, everybody. We uh, pride ourselves on having followed the Securities Act of 1933 and 1934 in connection with this offering. Uh, in fact, we believe it is the first crypto offering of its kind that relies solely on those rules, those laws, and the case law within the United States uh, that's based upon it. Uh, it's really rather simple. We rely primarily on the 33 Act, and the 33 Act makes it very clear that the most important aspect of it is making sure that the offerer, in this case, Realty, provides fair, accurate, and complete disclosure 
to any potential investor so that he or she can make an informed investment decision. It is not a guarantee of performance. Uh, uh, it does not guarantee that all the people involved are people that you might want to do business with, uh, but rather it's a way in which the U.S. government can be assured that the proper information is provided for an informed decision. That extends not only to the original buyer, but anybody who receives on an aftermarket basis, Uniswap, what have you, uh, a unit, or in this case, a coin as well. Uh, it is no more or no less than that. However, in order to get to that point, we've had to create, as I'm sure you've seen ad nauseum, uh, about a 90-page private placement memorandum, which we refer to as a PPM, that has to meet very specific guidelines as to the kinds of information and the way it's described to potential investors, the investor documentation, which relies upon uh, two exemptions in our case. One is Regulation D under the 33 Act, and the other is Regulation S under the uh, 33 Act. Regulation D refers specifically and, and, and solely to US citizens, Regulation S to outside or other than US citizens. In the United States, what the regulatory agencies have deemed necessary is that there is a certain net worth requirement that any potential investor, when he or she is buying a security, which is what our offering represents, uh, uh, they have to meet a certain level. That's what we call accredited investors. For Reg S investors, the uh, bar is not as high. So under Reg D and Reg S, um, uh, there are, uh, th there is an entire body of re rules, regulations, case law that relates to who it is that we are able to offer a security to. It's not like somebody going in and uh, buying a tea set. Uh, so when I say it is no more and no less than making sure you have adequate, proper, accurate information on the one hand, and uh, from your perspective, uh, uh, meeting certain requirements as it relates to net worth, credit worthiness, and the, and the like, that's what we rely upon. As a result, the regulatory agencies don't have to review and approve what we're offering to you, but by relying on all their guidelines in terms of all the paperwork that's available for and to you in order to make your investment decision in the event they choose to audit or review what we've done, which they do from time to time, we just haven't had our, uh, our, our time yet, as long as we've met those regulations, we're doing it in compliance with the securities laws. So as you could see, it's a very high standard. Uh, it's a very time consuming and costly standard, all behind the scenes. Uh, and the paperwork uh, and all of the uh, technological aspects related to it on our platform have all been geared to meet those very high standards. Cool. Thanks for that, Gary. I really appreciate it. John Mark, you were going to say how it relates to the um, properties that we put on the website? Yes. So we have two ways of dealing with the restrictions for regulation S and regulation D. They were, um, at first, we wanted to uh, code the restrictions applicable to each directly in the token. And depending on the residency or nationality of the token holder, uh, this or that um, restriction would kick in. For instance, uh, I'll give an example of a restriction in a few seconds. Uh, but that turned out to be more complicated and worthwhile when it came to uh, audit trace and um, and in general just was could lead to some confusion. So instead, what we decided to do 
is to have properties that would be exclusively uh, reserved for Regulation D investors and properties that would be exclusively uh, reserved for Regulation S uh, investors, Regulation S being non-US investors, Regulation D being only for uh, US accredited investors. That's how we present it. So instead of separate of coding the restriction in the token or in having two sets of tokens for the same property, we decided just to have each property specific for each exemption. That's it. It's simple. It keeps things very clear and very easy to, uh, to control and uh, verify. Now, for instance, I said that I would give an ex example of an extension. There are some transfer extensions, um, restrictions. Uh, for example, a person that has a um, token under a Regulation S uh, exemption cannot sell his token for a period of uh, one year, except if it goes back to the issuer, which is us. So that's why it's always Realty that buys back your token. Uh, for Reg D, the restriction is, I think, around 90 days. Um, so every time we buy back a token, the timer on that token, let's say that the token has been out of the US for uh, 10 months, and we buy it back as of 10 months, the timer on that token gets back to zero. So it has to once again stay out of the US, of US hands for another year. So we keep track of all that behind the scenes, um, but this is an example of a restriction. That's it. Awesome. Thanks, guys. Yeah, that always clears, clears things up for me as well, because um, I always appreciate getting more insight about to the, the way that these things are structured. Um, if there are no more questions, this is the last call for questions. Um, Bobby Shell, are there minimums for investing? Uh, yeah, the minimums are one token, um, which are pretty low. Um, actually, the lowest, I'm pretty sure. If you find uh, a realist, a fractional real estate investing platform that offers you lower minimums than us, please let me know because I've been saying that we are the lowest and I want, make, want to make sure I'm right on that one. Um, yes, there, there's no 50K minimum. Yes, that's that is true. That's correct. Um, uh, I'm just going to add this little tidbit. For people that are watching the YouTube, this is the advantage of actually tuning into the Realty call because then you can uh, watch and read the comments and questions that are being added in real time rather than being confused as to why I'm just speaking about random things. Um, and so, uh, yeah, so uh, thank you everyone for uh, tuning in to the bi-weekly community call. Again, this happens every other Thursday. Uh, and so in uh, two weeks from today, please tune in to the next one. Uh, and if you have things that you want asked, if you are confused about anything, we want that feedback. So there is a dedicated community call channel in Discord uh, for you to ask those questions and then we will add them onto the agenda of next week's call. Uh, and so, uh, Hold on. yep. If I may, we have one question, which is why does it take so much time to sell at the line 1024, mm. 10024? It's a good question. Please let me know. We don't have the answer. <laughs> it's a very good property, very solid, a good income. Uh, maybe it's the pictures are not very sexy, uh, but in general, it is a good financial uh, property for a financial investment. We like it very much. That's why we curated it, mm -hmm. and uh, it's there. I wanted also to add very quickly, when we said that we had uh, properties in Florida uh, that we were negotiating two on two of them, uh, please be aware, and I mean it for the entire community, uh, the properties are nice and solid. The cap rates will not compete with those of Detroit. Uh, that's why we went to Detroit initially, uh, because the cap rates were aggressive and uh, we could really get excellent deals. Florida will serve as a diversification it will be another type of uh, look and feel of the property, but the caps will not be able to be on the same level. So I just wanted to specify that as well. Thank you. Right, right. Real estate is not the same wherever you go, right? And so there's different metrics and different numbers and each investment is its own unique thing. Uh, and so the Florida market is not the Detroit market. So the, the numbers that come out of that are gonna be different. Um, okay. Uh, yeah, so to wrap that up, um, please join us uh, on the next community call in two weeks. And you can depend on this happening every two weeks into the future. So super honored that we have so many people in the chat. Uh, I really like seeing the, the excitement and the engagement. And so 
Uh, if you are not in the Discord, please come and join the Discord and our Telegrams as well. Um, that is where the community uh, coalesces and comes together and it's where we can interact with you guys and, and you can interact with us. So uh, that will conclude the, the Realty Community Call. So thanks for everyone for coming and, and showing up. Cheers.